Oh wait. Don't.
Well, good morning. Thank you for joining us um, to chat about what should have been the eighth Turbine Art Fair. Um, we're thrilled to see you all. I'm sorry we can't see you all in, per in person. But those of you who have generously been with us for some years know that we have um, three very distinct uh, objectives um, for the fair. Um, the main one, of course, is to launch um, emerging artists and to help them on their careers, whether they're young artists or those who are in their mid-career that perhaps have been underappreciated. Secondly, and most important, or almost importantly, is um, to, to boost young galleries. Uh, galleries are the lifeblood of the art economy and um, we feel it's important um, to assist them on their way. But most importantly, galleries and artists both need um, clients. So our third most and really most important objective is to grow the market for art um, in South Africa. We've always felt the best way to do that would be to have a live event that's fun, uh, with good music, great food, so that people can learn about um, art in a very accessible um, and easy and, and, and fun way. Sadly, um, this year, it's not to be. Um, COVID seems to have, have changed, changed much. But I felt very strongly that we needed to have some form of fair. As you know, um, artists and galleries were severely impacted by the lockdown. And of course, they have no um, government support. So we, we believe that we can't, although we can't have a fair, um, we can have something that's slightly different, um, but that can live alongside the fair in years to come when it returns to, to its major objective um, and, and the real fair. Um, so we're launching an online fair and we're going to take you through it this morning. Um, but this would not have been possible um, without the generous support of our sponsor RMB, who came on board um, and this is their third year that they've assisted us. We believe that they've, they've really helped us um, improve the fair, professionalize it more um, and add lots more projects um, to it. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce um, Alison Badenhorst. Um, who's going to talk about RMB's involvement in the fair. Thanks so much, Glynis. RMB is very proud to, to partner the Turban Art, Art Fair. RMB has always believed in supporting the creative economy, which has been a symbiotic and rewarding relationship um, for us. At its core, we know the creative economy has historically contributed 2 to 3% to GDP. Um, and I think given the devastating impact that the industry has faced over the last few months, it is even more critical that we create a platform for, for artists and gallerists to showcase their crafts. Um, this was obviously a no-brainer for r to continue our support of the fair during this year when I think artists and gallerists need it most. At r we are a talent brand and we've always believed in, in unlocking talent, um, both within the business context as well as in the creative economy. Um, and this year's lineup at the fair, I think, is very exciting, and there's definitely no shortage of, of African talent. Um, RMB is involved in the Talent Unlock program, which is an artistic mentorship program, as well as the RMB Private Bank Talks program, which also brings to life um, art for many of our clients, those who may be new buyers, and also those who saw our existing um, art collectors. We know that the power of creativity often flourishes in adversity um, and within limitations. Um, and at r &B, we call the solutionist thinking. And I think a lot of us have been doing quite a bit of this lately. Um, and we are encouraged by the resilience and optimism that so many continue to demonstrate um, over this period. I think taking the fair into a virtual environment is a first for us, um, and we're really excited about it. We've all had to reimagine and rebuild and think of doing things differently. Um, but I think the ultimate benefit is really to, to the artists, artists, gallerists, and, and public. And um, we are bringing in a much broader and diverse audience, which is a, a hopeful catalyst for the creative economy. At the end of the day, it's really about getting sales for the gallerists and, and artists, um, and, and a show and, and show and sell, um, which is obviously balanced by our purposeful involvement from an R&B perspective um, in terms of creating a win-win environment for the creative economy as a whole. So I'd like to, to thank Glynis um, and the forum for, for our partnership over this period. Um, and we really, really hope it's gonna be an, an exciting um, opportunity and, and fair going forward. So thank you so much. 
Thanks, Alison. And to tell you more about the fair is Aisha Wadja, um, who's the fair manager, the fair manager um, this year. Aisha. Hi, everyone. Um, welcome. Um, I'm just waiting for Lauren to pull up the slide. Um, thank you, Lauren. Um, next slide, great. So as you would have experienced at our previous fairs, TAF is a very experiential fair. Um, and one of the best part of the one of the best parts of the fair is the atmosphere and the experience and people coming together and experiencing art culture, food, music, and wine. Um, so we, our aim really is with the online fair to create an online platform that is culturally enriching and to replicate as much of the human connection that we would have had at TEF um, in an online platform. Um, Lauren, if you can just go to the next slide. Thank you. So we've, um, you know, we've continued with our special projects as they are a major part of our fair and we've added on more special projects to give people as much content and as much to see as possible. Um, these are tactile visions um, curated by Professor Charlene Khan. This is an exhibition, an exhibition of tactile, textile based work and includes artists like Mary Sibanda, Tanya Peterson, as well as Dean Hutton, um, just to name a few. Um, we have New World Order, which is an exhibition by um, artists who also pra practice um, in the um, academic fields. Um, and this is curated by Dr. Johan Tom and includes artists like Willem Bosov, Avi Sufel, and Red Weston. Um, and then as Alison mentioned, we have the RMB Talent Unlocked program, which really looks at young talent and mentoring that talent. Um, and this year they're looking at uh, alumni artists, um, including Manietta uh, Monyamane and Vanessa Tembani. Um, Turbine Artway um, launched COVID um, Stilled Life, a COVID-19 photography project um, recently, um, which is going to aid the Barca Artist Relief Fund. Um, and we'll have the exhibition of um, 100 photographs selected from that uh, project on the fair. Um, we also have First Look, uh, which is our graduate exhibition. Um, usually, usually we do a graduate exhibition of um, university students who are graduating from their fourth and final years. This year, we're looking at master's students from select South African universities. Um, and this will be a series of group exhibitions. Um, and the final, the, the students' final exhibitions will also be on show after the fair. And then we have Looking Out, which is our installation feature for the fair. Um, and this year, we've, we're working with Jake Michael Singer, who will present two sculptures um, in a viewing room at the fair. Um, so naturally, navigating an online fair can be a bit intimidating, um, but it's quite simple on um, our new platform. What people need to do is register for our viewing rooms. Um, and ideally, they would register uh, before the fair to get immediate access on the 28th of August. We're going to have an interactive homepage, which will lead um, all our viewers to all our exciting new projects. Um, and that's quite a fun thing to play with. So please look out for that soon. Um, we have dynamic online exhibitions in our viewing rooms, which contain conversations with artists, um, behind the scenes, video footage into the artworks and making the artworks. Um, and then you will be able to also connect with the artists and the creative industry through our talks program and our walkabouts program, um, which I will discuss a bit more later. Um, you'll also be able to view our exhibitor and artist profiles and contact our exhibitors directly. Um, so now we're going to hear from a few of our exhibitors at the fair. Um, the first up is, of course, Wilhelm. Um, Wilhelm um, uh, von Rensburg um, has curated um, three extraordinary exhibitions for us. Um, uh, Wilhelm is from Strauss, and those of you who've been to the fair would have seen the PNF exhibition, the Ermiston, and, and last year's um, wonderful Machabella and Portway one. So, um, but Helen, we, we're looking forward to finding out what you've got for us this year. Uh, uh, thanks, Glennis. This year, I am working on what was initially the 
umbrella theme of the film, uh, namely visionary art. I don't know if it still is, but I thought of this year looking at uh, Gladys Mugudlandlu and uh, Maggie Laubscher. Uh, visionary artists, both of them, and but living parallel uh, lives. Uh, they, for instance, um, uh, grew up uh, in more or less the same um, environment in a rural area, uh, 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 region. Maggie Lapsha in the Western Cape, uh, Gladys Mugudlandlu in the Eastern Cape, uh, both very religious upbringings. Um, Gladys, for instance, was a member of the African Methodist Episcopal uh, uh, Church, and Maggie, although a Protestant upbringing, soon took to Christian sciences. Both artists were criticized at their first exhibition. Gladys uh, was, uh, art was called too innocent, naive, even escapist, childlike scribbles. Maggie, on the other hand, was considered, her work was considered to be too modernist and later not modernist enough. They shared similar subject matter, as you can see in uh, these two images, uh, mainly that of birds, you know, and uh, portraits as well, landscapes they did, portraits, birds, um, and also the nature of labor. And all of these issues I, I, I will uh, sort of exemplify in and through the exhibition. Um, I think um, the visionary nature of the art um, resides in uh, not necessarily predicting the future, that type of visionary uh, art, but uh, look at it uh, in more uh, of a spiritual uh, uh, aspect of uh, their work. Maggie, for instance, based all her work in bright sunlight. That is something she got from Christian uh, sciences. And Gladys, on the other hand, uh, she painted a lot of shadows in her figures. Maggie hardly ever, when you look at Maggie's figures, there are no shadows. Everything is bathed in uh, bright sunlight. Gladys, on the other hand, a lot of shadows, and those shadows really reference um, uh, or pay tribute to the ancestors. Now, the interesting thing about these two artists is that their very strong legacy, and I will also point that out, uh, Maggie, in terms of academic research, Hers is um, uh, the only oeuvre that uh, was honoured with a proper catalogue resume. Um, uh, the only artist uh, up to date um, uh, where, uh, who, who's honoured with that. And Gladys, on the other hand, served her legacy is because of the creative um, um, inspiration she provided for other artists, such as the contemporary African artist Temangwa uh, Leulere. Uh, who used uh, her work for a performance piece when he won the 2015 uh, Standard Bank Young Artist Award, and also uh, for, for academics such, such as Ntom, uh, Ntombela, Ntombela uh, who restaged one of, um, one of her exhibitions in the Cape. Now, apart from the virtual exhibition uh, that I will mount, um, I will also do a walkabout on the Friday, uh, and a teacher's workshop on the Saturday, the 29th. Now, normally I approach Artist Proof Studio and uh, Glynis mentioned the three shows I did in the past, Birmingham Stern and the Douglas Portway and Louis Macubella show. Uh, I approached Artist uh, Proof Studio as uh, students. Uh, they produce works which, are also, uh, which were also on sale during the fair. But this year I thought uh, because the, the studio is in fact uh, closed, uh, I would address teachers and uh, look at the creative possibilities um, that they can use in terms of these two artists, both these artists included in the curriculum, the national school curriculum, the CAPS, as well as the independent schools, uh, the IEB schools. So, so I will be looking at that. Uh, we have also finalized uh, the catalog. We will have an electronic catalog of the exhibition available, as well as uh, hard copies. So uh, all in all, um, uh, uh, something great to look forward to. Well, the Strauss exhibitions are really not to be missed. Um, something else not to be missed is our virtual reality um, collaboration between an artist and a virtual reality. It's actually fabulous, but it's, you have to see that to appreciate it. So we won't discuss it. What I would like to do though is from, from one end of the spectrum to the other is to introduce Londi. Um, who is the curator of Talent Unlocked this year, and she's got a very exciting lineup for us. Londi. Londi? 
myself. Hi, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Perfectly. Okay. <laughs> and just to give some background on RMB Talent Unlocked, it's a mentorship program that is accompanied by an exhibition at the Turbine Art Fair. It's been running for about five years. And this year's program is focused on alumni artists that have participated in the program over the past five years. I selected eight artists, which I thought needed the opportunity to improve their work and to gain additional skills in terms of improving their work conceptually and exploring other ways they could improve their medium. Um, the mentorship was initially was very hard for me um, because firstly, the artist and I had never met and everything had to happen online. Um, initially, I struggled with getting a sense of how the artists work and so forth, but eventually we got the swing of things. Um, I think a program like this is important for artists because Often, especially in this country, they're not receiving any of the training that they need in the real world in terms of when they study towards their degrees and causes. Um, and I think having me as a mentor with working experience in the arts was helpful in, in them developing their work and getting ready to showcase at Turban Art Fair. Um, the curatorial aspect of the program integrated practical art making, focusing on process and conceptual development. The aim was to provide the artists with a comprehensive program that encompassed the necessary tools to help build and sustain a career in the industry. And the ultimate outcome was to strengthen the artist's work as a whole. Um, I provided guidance through development of their work through technical and conceptual advice. It was, we worked on the mentorship for about four months. And I think we did really well in terms of taking their work to the next level. Um, so what else, um, what else can I say about the program? So at the end of the, the mentorship, I realized that there was a common thread in terms of what kind of, the, what kind of work the artists had created. And most of them created work that, that was around notions of what home means to each one. So um, there is, I'm gonna pull up a document with a few images of a kind of work that will be on exhibition. Let me just, just a sec. Sorry, my computer's a bit slow. Can everyone see what I've shared? For example, um, Rick Baloy is an artist who participated in Talent Unlocked last year. And I thought he deserved another opportunity to develop his work. The first image is by him. And his work is a, is a celebration of matriarchs that brought him up in his hometown of, um, I forget what it's called, but it's in Limpopo. The second image is an artist called Vanessa Antembani, who's just completed her master's at, at WITS, I think. And her work is about her background, her family background of, um, her mother was born in, in Mozambique and she made a new body of work that celebrates and speaks of her heritage. The third image is Manyata Manyamane, who's a photographer. And in this series, she went into for 
for homes in the township to document how they display family memorabilia. And yeah, and so I will be doing a walkabout with some of the artists on the 31st of August, and I will elaborate further on the works at the walkabout. Thank you. Perfect. Don't uh, miss Londi Mandiko's walkabout on the 31st as, she's, as she spoke. Um, and it really looks like there's some very exciting work and talent unlocked um, this year. One of the most exciting um, things, well, for me personally, was um, a new exhibitor that, um, well, we have several new exhibitors this year. We have almost 60 exhibitors. But to me, the most exciting was welcoming the Goodman Gallery. Um, I grew up with the Goodman Gallery being the absolutely stellar and, and most important gallery and nothing's changed. Um, so it's my pleasure to introduce Neil Dundas um, from the gallery. Hello, everybody. I hope that uh, I'm good and audible. I do apologize for the camera quality. It's not um, perfectly working. But we have, um, in years, probably 10 or 12 years now, taken part in something like eight or nine international affairs per annum, um, which frankly normally puts uh, a great deal of stress on the team who work with us. But in this particular year, we have felt more than ever <clears throat> because of COVID-19 that it was important to really support the base here at home, um, be part of a project that includes many of our colleagues and um, local artists and is very specifically um, looking at South African collectors, younger collectors um, and an easier kind of access to the market. And in fact, we are very pleased and have seen um, excellent results, we feel, in what Dennis and Aisha and the team have done with their template. Um, I think it is particularly user-friendly as an exhibitor, and I do believe also for the visitor, it will be a very rewarding experience. Um, the breadth of the fair has expanded over the past few years, and I'm sure for those of you like me who have attended in very different venues and expanded venue within the turbine hall itself. But now last year in Ilovo, um, the throng was extraordinary. The, um, the atmosphere and the crowd certainly um, is something that Glynis and her team have always cultivated as, um, and they've kept that spirit of fun and relaxation, leisure activity going through the weekend after their, their openings. And I feel pretty sure that this will be, um, as an online event, something that for many people is going to be more user-friendly, more relaxed, um, but also informative and, and at a really good level of quality. Um, but certainly compared to some of the more complex um, platforms that have been chosen for some international projects recently, while they may have a lot of great quality work, um, it is also quite digitally challenging managing some of those particular um, profiles. Um, we have um, chosen a, a series of works which also um, link very much to Londi's theme with the group of artists she has selected um, from that Talent Unlocked series. So we have works that concern the notion and the concept of what a home should be, um, but what sadly it is not for so many people. So we've tried not to produce something that's just a bleak look, but we have to acknowledge the fact, particularly during this time of crisis in our own country, that for the lucky, there are amazing um, works that give the sense of home being a haven and being that place of great warmth and contact amongst themselves and their families 
um, something that sadly for many people that human contact at the moment is lacking. Um, but for other people, home is a place that can be a thing of terror. We have a dreadful epidemic, not of COVID viruses, but of violence on women and children, and very often by the men who should be their loved ones, their carers, their nurturers. Um, and then there are also people, of course, who who really do lack a, a true and honest shelter and happiness of home. So it's a gamut of work that really look at the ideas of what people long for out of their home, what some people find, and the sweetness of a domestic bliss, if one can use that overworked term, and for other people, the challenge that is presented on a daily basis to feel at home and relaxed and safe somewhere, no matter what that notion of home comes to. It's an interesting program. We've targeted it um, to include some lower priced works by very famous names. Um, we won't blow all the cover by telling every name now, but um, so from the, the oldest participant, um, Sue Williamson, a great and very well-known artist in South Africa and around the world, who will be turning 80 next year um, with a retrospective abroad in the works, um, a major new book on her published in Italy two years ago. And we're delighted that we have work from Sue, but also from one of the young women artists we currently regard as one of Southern Africa's top um, export talents, Pamela Fatsimo Sandstrom, who now is resident and working in Canada. And we have two really exquisite detailed drawings by her, um, which really are about a, a sweetness of domesticity and the bond of mother and child particularly as well. Um, I think that people will find it exciting and we're happy to say that we have works from sub 10,000 rand to one or two that push the envelope at the upper end, upper end of the spectrum of pricing. But we do believe that this model that Turbine Fair has adopted of a range of price within a particular affordability to a South African audience and introducing in many cases new talent and working together with RMB for the Talent Unlocked program they have established a very special footprint in the country. And we think this year might just break the records. Um, I'm sure it's going to be extremely well supported. There is a public eager and willing and happy to take part. Um, and we look forward to welcoming the, pro the public to our project along with the rest of you. Thank you, Glynis. Thanks, Neil. Um, gosh, I, I hope you're right. Nothing would make me um, happier <laughs> than that. Um, um, I, I've got a feeling that Pamela uh, was originally from Botswana, but I might be misunderstood, uh, mis perhaps forgotten. Yeah, southern, southern, not South Africa. Mm. Botswana, indeed. Um, and in fact, that leads perfectly on to, um, to our next um, talk, which is um, from, from a wonderful gallery called, in fact, it, well, she'll tell you more about it, um, from Botswana. Um, so it, please welcome um, Lerato. Lerato, I hope I don't get your name wrong. Botswana. Perfect. <laughs> thank you, Glynis. Um, thank you, Neil. Indeed, uh, Pamela is from Botswana. Um, and Dora Lawapi, we are a project space that is based in Khaborone, Botswana. Uh, this year, we will be showcasing the works of one of our key young artists here in Botswana. Her name is Deborah Kranwo. Uh, her work uh, primarily focuses on exploring beauty, femininity, um, sensuality, and, and bits of intimacy. Um, but I'm here to really talk about why we, we selected the, the Turbine Art Fair platform and why it's so important for us um, outside of the, the South African context. Uh, it goes without saying that, that TAF is an essential platform for emerging talent. Um, and as TAF really uh, expands its regional footprint or seeks to expand its regional footprint, that 
multi-tiered uh, business model really becomes conducive for many galleries and, and project spaces um, based um, in the African continent. So what Turbine does is really it caters to that nuanced environment with a, with a broad spectrum of, of stakeholders in the arts um, in other African countries. Um, you know, TAF has, has an exceptional reputation amongst previous artists that have exhibited and previous sponsors as well. RMB has a strong footprint within um, the region, the Southern African region. Um, and really just to finish up, it's that, it's that cyclical relationship and that's those cyclical partnerships then that become fundamental in growing um, the creative economy uh, in the region. So we are excited to be taking part for the first time. We do have a, a sister gallery in Namibia that's also taking part. Um, and we're looking forward to that the 28th of August. And thank you so much to the Turbine team for such a phenomenal opportunity for us. We're absolutely thrilled um, to have you and we hope that the virtual platform will enable other galleries um, next year to, um, to come from further afield without having to send all their artworks down. So back to Aisha, who's going to talk about the RMB um, Talks program, um, which will be broadcast using Webinar Jam um, um, over the period of the fair. Hi, again. Um, so, um, our talks and walkabout program um, is sponsored by RMB Private Bank, um, and it's really amazing because they are they really helping us and able to connect with our audiences in a new way. Um, so, for our pu public program this year, we we're doing our talks program um, as well as well as a series of video walkabouts, um, which will be picks from top. Um, topics from media personalities, artists, and creatives. Um, in addition to that, we have started a series called RMB Tef Art 101, which are 10 minute inside talks with artists. Um, these will be pre-recorded and loaded up onto our website. Um, so please keep a look out for that. We've got quite a lot lined up. Um, and then in addition, um, Kai FM are curating a selection of playlists to listen to while viewing the fair. Um, just for that extra element of music um, and experience. Um, Lauren, if you go to the next slide, please. Um, these are some of the talks that we've got um, lined up for the fair. So Parallel Lives, as Wilhelm had mentioned earlier, and he's gonna talk us through um, this fabulous exhibition that he's putting together. Um, and then we have Woven Envisioning the World Through Textile. Um, this will be moderated by Charlene Khan and in conversation with her participating artists, Reshma Chiba, uh, Vilamine de Villiers and Mary Sibande. Um, we've got Feel It In Your Soul, uh, which is looking at collecting from a place of passion and vision um, with Hussein Mohammed, who is a lawyer and a collector, and then moderate um, in conversation with Loris Tate, um, who is publisher at Joburg In Your Pocket. Um, and then we've got becoming a photographer, um, which links back to our still life project and looking at the life in pur purpose of a photojournalist um, with Greg Marinovich and Musa Umalo. Um, and this is just also looking at what it means to be a photographer, especially um, now in this in the current climate. Um, and then we have a conversation about education in art. Um, art education is extremely important and rapidly diminishing across the country. Um, so David Andrews will be facilitating um, a conversation around art education across South Africa. Um, and this will go from high school to informal education, as well as um, tertiary universities. And then we have another conversation on alumni insight is because we are celebrating our eighth edition of TAF, we would like to look back at some of our alumni artists who have really progressed um, from the first edition of the fair. Um, and this will be a conversation with a uh, settler, Marajo Mashilo, um, who is an artist and who won the first TEF prize in 2014. Kamohelo uh, Masemola, who is from the Black Ink Contemporary Collective. Um, and they've been participating in the fair since I think about 2014, if I'm not mistaken. And then Anastasia Pato, who is an artist and also a project manager who participated in the first turbine art fair. Um, and this conversation will be facilitated by myself. Um, Lauren, if you go to the next slide. Ooh, okay. 
facilitator. Um, and then we have a series of video walkabouts where um, we've selected a group of people who will talk us through the top picks of the fair and what to look out for. So we've got Funzo Sirogi from Tswane University of Technology, Fine and Applied Arts, um, Aspasia Karas, the lifestyle editor at Sunday Times, um, Johan Tom, who is the curator for New World Order. Um, so he'll talk us through that exhibition. Um, Craig Jacobs, the columnist at Sunday Times and fashion designer. Zanele Kumalo, who is a blogger for What Zan Did Next. Um, Londi Modico, curator of uh, R&B Talent Unlocked. Um, Wilhelm van Rensburg will also do Strauss, Strauss and Company's top picks for the fair. And then Nomaza Nongkunka uh, Kupes, who um, runs Undiscovered Canvas. Um, these are just some highlights from our Talks and Walkabouts program. We are adding more, so please keep updated with our website um, to get yes. the best. We have two more talks that we will add this week. And um, don't forget that um, Aspasia is, in fact, the publisher of Wanted magazine. Um, so thanks very much. Um, and I think that's back to, to everyone else. Um, to chat more about the fair, let's chat about your questions. From Timothy around um, the VR experience. Um, so we've got a collaboration between two artists, uh, which we will only um, announce with the launch of the fair, but it's a really exciting project. Um, it was designed to be a complete and immersive VR experience at the physical fair. But what they've done in the meantime is build it so that it, um, it can be viewed online and it doesn't necessarily require um, 3D glasses or VR glasses. Um, but it, yeah, it's it's a quite immers it's quite an immersive experience. Okay, our talks, um, uh, all our talks and walkabouts will be recorded, and we will upload these onto the site um, after each one of them. Um, okay, there's a question from Paul Mills. Okay, sorry, that's also around um, recording the talks and making them available after the fair, which they will be. Um, please send in any other questions that you have. Would anyone like to ask a question? Is there anything else we need to cover? Oh, okay, there's a question that's come in from uh, Marilyn. Marilyn, I, I wish we knew. Um, <laughs> wish we knew. Um, I think what we're focusing really on is the online sales. I don't mind if someone just one person comes and just buys the whole fair. But but obviously we'd like to, um, you know, the fair is free um, and people are, are requested to, um, to register in order to go into the viewing rooms. Uh, but um, but given given that there's no charge, we hope that that perhaps some people that might not have come in, in previous years or might have been intimidated to come um, might see this as an opportunity to to learn more about it. And of course, all the content will remain there for um, the the rest of the the, the year. Um, we, we're planning to launch our new membership program um, during the fair, um, and and we're planning um, a full range of events um, to take us up. Uh, to the new, the next fair next year. Okay, so there's another question from Edward um, asking if the price cap will remain at fifty thousand. Um, yes, that's correct. The price cap will remain at fifty thousand. Um, and then we've got a question from Louise. Um, what will the process for getting your artwork de be um, delivered after the purchase? Um, so this this will be directly negotiated with the galleries and the exhibitors um, and they will arrange for delivery um, of the work to this to the buyers okay that's that's all the questions I have for now welcome to ask it verbally rather than through the chat I would be interested to know
Go for it, Paul. Yeah, no, I would be interested to know, are you expecting a greater number of uh, visitors this year because you are now having a virtual exhibition rather than a kind of physical exhibition, which obviously has its um, limitations in terms of the number of people that you can usually have? Um, may I ask, uh, answer that question, Paul? Thank you for that question. Um, we've been incredibly lucky in the past three years and, and had sort of numbers between 10 and 10 and a half each year. Um, and it's quite a lot of people. So I'd be thrilled if we got more than that. I really would be. Um, but, but we don't know. Um, we want to keep our place as the most visited fair in South Africa, but who knows? Is there anything else? Well, thank you very much. And um, we hope you'll all visit us um, in perhaps what's only about 10 days time. We're really looking forward to it. And um, yeah, we hope you enjoy it as much as we have putting it together. Thank you very much. Thanks all.